We'll start at passing guard. What is passing guard? You have to think of think of the guard pass ladder. Feet, knees, hips, his belt line, core, chest, head. That's what you're climbing. Okay. So I can get past the feet, but I'm not past the knee. Okay. I can get past the knees, but I'm not controlling his head or hip. I can be here controlling the hip, he's on his side, but he's not flat, enabling him to laterally move. Just move your hips, move your head away, and bring a knee in or underhook, whatever. Side control, remember, is hard to get, easy to lose. Hard to get, easy to lose. What I wanna do is, as I'm passing, I need to stay low, and I need to lead with my core, not as much my chest, okay? To pass, I need to get him to come to one side. This right here is better for him than it is for me. When you're passing, you're gonna go either on the inside, under, or over, or you're gonna go on the outside. Simple as that, okay? Hit yourself. Keep it quiet back there. So, I'm just gonna pin him to the side, then I'll choose a pass. Basic hip frame here, okay? In here, and now I'm controlling. He's not flat, but I'm controlling his hip from here. Can she swim in? Control the head. Keep him flat. Hip, head. The key that you have to understand here, if you overcommit to one, whether the hip or too much to the head, you're gonna lose the ability to keep him flat. Right now I'm chest to chest. I need to kind of slide up a bit so that now more so my core is on him. These hands hover off the mat, and I'm low. I'm controlling his hip, with my right hip, and my right elbow. I'm controlling his head with my hand, and they're all hovering. I don't want to do this and relieve pressure off of him. I want to keep the pressure, and my feet are active. So I'm constantly providing lateral pressure, and I'm taking his head offline. So that when he begins to move a little bit here, go ahead, I can move with him, and I can be dynamic. I can be dynamic, okay? He's gonna do a couple things. He's either gonna try to turn into me, lifting his far hip off the mat, or he's gonna try to turn away, okay? Either way, the underhook is for keeping him flat when they turn away. As you notice, my hips screw back and I'm kind of jamming his elbow and his near hip with my right hip. If he, I feel turning to his right side into me, I can use my elbow on his hip to flatten him out and then go back to rolling his hip, okay? If you notice, what I can also do is I can move my hip to the right, to the right, and basically fold him over this way here, and so forth. But my hip is staying in contact with his right hip, my, and my right elbow is controlling his hip, so I'm kind of pinning him here, so that even when he tries to begin to move left or right, I can also control the head, and I'm constantly adjusting. You can't, the problem with being down on both knees, and I'll show you from another angle. The problem with being down on both knees is that I'm now static and he's dynamic. So move a little bit. Anyway, yeah, right there. Immediately, you see that? And I couldn't even move. Plus, when you're like so, there's a hole right in the V of your hip and uh, hip with your leg and hip. Okay, there's a hole there for the, it's actually, put your head towards you. So what I want you guys to do is, I want you to be in this dynamic fashion where I'm always able to roll my hips, control his head, and keep him flat. Because as he's trying to move, I'm controlling his head, I'm moving him, he's moving, and I'm constantly adjusting. If I don't move, go ahead, immediately my side control will deteriorate. Side control is hard to get, easy to lose. If you notice, with two movements, he got ahead of me and I'm behind. So I also have to be able to roll my hips to be able to go north south, which is ideally where you really want to be. When I'm here, okay, his frame from my head, and I'll talk about this also. If I'm controlling too much of his hip, he can put this frame in, frame my head. If I'm controlling too much of his head, he can move his hip out and bring his right knee in 
to recover a guard right there. And immediately I lost the guard. Okay? So there's got to be this balance. But remember one thing. This frame right here will only be as effective as this frame is to frame my hip. Okay? Frame my hip a little bit here. Yes. Even more so over here. Okay? Prevents me from getting around. Now slowly frame here. And guide my hip down to your left knee. You see how much leverage he has there? Me, that's me pushing him in him strong. Now from here, let this go. Go ahead. See how weak that is? So you have to recognize this is your problem when you're in side control, when you're on top side control. And not this one right here. So hip hand's the problem. Hip back. hand, yeah, because his, and you frame <coughs> with this part of your elbow on that hip so that your hands are looking towards you. Because here you're pushing more so with the outside uh, tricep here you're like extending the shoulder so here it's hard for me to get around yeah but see now it's very strong and if he just turns either way it's gonna push my head and this frame is strong if he's not framing my hip right here frame my head he's got no frame on the head and it's fairly easy to collapse and move now when he frames the hip now going back to the top side control I need to break this frame here because here I, I know what he's gonna do he's gonna begin to turn his hips and if he's framing me here, I got a problem. So I'm gonna move here and I roll over the hip and I still stay sideways. But I'm not on my knees like this and I'm not planking on him doing this whole thing. I gotta be like a wet mattress. And if you see, I roll the hips, as they say in Jamaican Jiu Jitsu, rolling the hips over the face. Cause I can tell his face is turned to the left. Gonna make it real hard for his body to turn to the right. Okay? so. This is side control. This is dynamic side control. Side control has to be dynamic. It can't be static unless you're just a really big guy and you can just hold him there. But if you're holding, remember another thing. This is very popular. No key, of course, it's a little bit different. But when you're here, what submissions do you have with your hands like this? Pillow. Even when you're here, what do you have? Pillow. Pillow? Sure. Well, you just have to move your right hand to shove his left arm. Well, I gotta let go of my hand. So I, you work so hard to get uh, here, only to go to, to let go, you know what I'm saying? So why work so hard to clasp your hands unless it's like no gi and you need to control them because you don't have any kind of alternative. You can also grab the gi here and so forth. But the goal is to pin, okay, flat, hip, head. And I'm balancing between the two because if he gets a little bit too squirmy here, go ahead. I can also switch. Now from here, I'm as far away possibly as I can be from the legs. Side control is not a threat. And from here, I got a lot of options. From here. All right. Come here, hit that one, hit that one. And uh, to the wall, feet to the window. It's reverse. So, all right, right here, look. From here, from the head, hip, hips, right here. And you see how I'm constantly rolling the hip? Because I can roll the hip also this way here. And you can mount just by folding like a fetus. Away from you. Here, here. He's moving around, getting a little bit squirrely here. And you block that hip. But still, my hips are rolling. Okay? I have arm control here. I know I can, I can isolate that arm and all kinds of stuff. So your objective is hip, flat, and control the head. And rolling the hips. The key, I believe, here is. <laughs> is this right here. What I'm doing that you may not see is I'm constantly driving my hip into his hip and my elbows pulling into my right hip. So it keeps him stuck flat as I'm keeping him flat and controlling his head. So as he moves a little bit slowly here, okay, see how his hips jammed up? He's got to work real hard in order to Get out of this hip frame right here. Okay, so move around a little more. You know, constantly adjusting. If I don't adjust, move. move. One, two, three. That's it. So you have to be dynamic in side control. It's not one of those positions where you rest. There's other positions. But one thing, one more thing here we're gonna do after. So this is the first part is you can just get here. Hip with your elbow, hip with your hip. Primary pressure, secondary is chest. In wrestling, shoulders, chest is primary. Jiu-Jitsu, this. And I'm constantly 
Work in that yamakizel. You know, that's where the yamaka goes, right, Jerry? And we're going across the yamakizel. We're not hugging the neck because he's strong there. Here, not so much. Okay? And you scoop it like seven ice cream. Right? And, right here. And no game would you recommend the chest to chest over this, over a quarter chest? No. No, not, not this. If, I, if, if you really want to control them and they're squirming around, you're here. But the problem is, is that when you get here, you go too heavy on the head, he's still framing here. And he can bridge and lift his hips and move him and bring that right knee in, right on my hip, and begin to recover. So, and that's, and that's what makes the side control hard to get, easy to lose. Does that make sense? All right, so elbow on the far hip, your hip on the near hip, hand constantly scooping, I want to tweak his head offline because if his head's offline with his spine, okay, he, he needs to realign it. He can't be strong here. Here he's strong, here he's not so strong. Okay? And this is where you're controlling you wear them out. And then from here, your right elbow can come up on the hip, come off the hip, up on the hip, you to the belly, all kinds of stuff. Alright, let's do it. One, two, three. Go.